Hello YouTube, Librarian Larry here, and today I will be going over all of the COGS attacks and what they mean. I did a video similar to this quite some time ago where I went over all of the COGS names and designs and explained what they meant in terms of business, but today I will be going over all of their attacks and explain what they mean in the context of real life business terms. First we have Audit, an attack that can be done by bean counters and number crunchers. The animation for Audit is the COG taking out a typewriter and punching a few numbers into it. Back in 1990s and early 2000s when Toontown was released, a typewriter-ish calculator was the main way for people to figure out their tax returns. If Toontown were to be remade, this animation would probably be modernized. Now an audit is when the government looks at a business or individual's tax returns and makes sure they are accurate. That is why it is appropriate that this move was given to bean counters and number crunchers since they are both cogs heavily involved with money. Next is bite, a move that can only be performed by loan sharks. When they use bite they take out a pair of cartoony dentures and throw it at you. This is one of the more literal moves referencing the fact that they are sharks and that sharks bite people. Next is Bounce Check, a move that can be performed by short changes, penny pinchers, tight wads, and double talkers. For this move, the cog pulls out a check, throws it, and it bounces to hit the tune. Bounce Check is a check that cannot be processed because the account holder has insufficient funds. That is why this move makes sense for the cash boss to do, but I'm not exactly sure why a double talker does it as well. Next is Brainstorm, a move that can be performed by micromanagers and mover and shakers. For this move, the cog sends a cloud over the tune's head that rains words. Brainstorm is when a group of people try to think of a solution for a problem together. It makes sense for boss boss to use this since they are the executives and they need to find solutions to everyone's problems. Next is Buzzword, which can be used by double talkers, micromanagers, and the minglers. Yep, I know it's the mingler, not just mingler for some reason. Anyways, for this move, the cog pounds its fist in its other hand and it starts sprouting out words that attack the tune. A buzzword is an overused phrase that has little meaning being used in a business to develop a marketing strategy. Some examples include immersive, experience, and gamification. It makes sense for double talkers, micromanagers, and the minglers to use this move because their jobs involve a lot of talking. Next is Calculate, a move that can only be used by bean counters and number crunchers. For this move, the cog pulls out a calculator and mathematical signs start attacking the tune. This one is very obvious since calculate means to figure out a math problem. Next is can, a move that can be performed by downsizers and corporate raiders. The cog takes out a big can and throws it at the tune. Canned is slang for being fired from a business, and in this case, it is quite literally a giant can. Next, we have chomp, which is one of the most powerful moves in the entire game. This move is the signature move of the Lone Sharks, and when they use it, they throw a pair of dentures at the tune. The animation is very similar to Bite, just much more powerful. Like Bite, this is the reference to the cogs being sharks since chomping is a more powerful form of biting. Next is Clip on Tie, a move that can be used by flunkies, short changes, and telemarketers. For this move, the cog takes out a small tie and throws it at the tune. A clip on tie is a tie for people who can't tie a tie. It has a small clip that clips onto the person's shirt. Next is crunch, a move that is a signature move of the number crunchers. The cog takes a pile of numbers and throws it at the tune. The tune then trips multiple times. This move is a play on the term crunch the numbers, which means to do math. That's also why this is the number crunchers signature move. Next is the motion, the signature move of the micromanagers. This move is where the cog takes some dust and throws it on the tune, freezing it in place. This is actually a double pun since the motion means to move down a position in a company and is also playing off the word deep motion, which means to freeze in place. Next, we have double talk, a move that can be performed by double talkers, cold callers, and telemarketers. For this move, the cog bangs his fist on his other hand and the words attack the tune from both sides. Double talk is a term used for someone who talks about people behind their back. Next we have Downsize, a signature move of the Downsizers. The cog sprays yellow particles onto the tune, which causes them to become different sizes before returning to normal. Downsize means to fire someone to keep the company expenses down. The person doing the firing is also called a Downsizer, which is why it is their signature move. In addition to that, there's a chance the cog might say, Honey, I Shrunk the Tune, which is a reference to the 1989 movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Next is Eviction Notice, which is the signature move of the Bloodsuckers. The cog throws a piece of paper and if it hits the tune, they cringe and take damage. An eviction notice is when the landlord tells a tenant that they have to leave the property they are renting. Next is Evil Eye, one of the strongest cog moves that can be used by corporate raiders, legal eagles, and two faces. For this move, a red eye appears on top of the cog's head and the eye moves forward and attacks a tune. I couldn't find a direct meaning for Evil Eye, but I assume it is when the boss looks at you with an angry expression. 
Next is Filibuster, a move that can only be used by Glad Handlers. The cog waves its finger at the tune and words come flying to attack the tune. Filibuster is when a politician talks for hours to delay a vote. Some famous examples of filibusters include Alphonse D'Amato reading the entire phone book before Congress, or more recently Senator Ted Cruz reading Green Eggs and Ham. Glad handlers have this move because a glad handler is someone who greets someone with an overly happy expression and likes to talk, which means they would be great for a filibuster. Next is Fill with Lead, which is a move that can be used by pencil pushers. The cog takes a pencil sharpener and pencil and starts to sharpen the pencil. The black pencil dust comes flying at the tune, attacking them. Now the meaning for this one is actually kind of funny since fill with lead is a gangster term for shooting someone. In the context of Toontown, however, it is a reference to the fact that pencils are made of lead, but the gangster subtext is definitely still there. Next is finger wag, which can be used by penny pinchers, pencil pushers, big wigs, micromanagers, tight wads, and backstabbers. The cog will wag his finger at the tune and purple words saying blah 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 come flying at the tune. When someone is talking down to someone in cartoons, it is stereotypical that they will wag their finger at the person they are talking down to. Which explains why this move can be used by a lot of cogs. Next is fire, the signature move of the tightwad. The cog wags his finger at the tune and a flame ignites under the tune which damages them. Obviously fire is a term for losing your job. This move is given to the tightwads because a tightwad is a mean person or cranky person, which would usually be the person to fire someone. Next is Fountain Pen, which can be used by glad handlers, micromanagers, headhunters, and pencil pushers. The cog takes a fountain pen and sprays the black ink on the tune. This move can only be used by boss bots because they are the executives, and a stereotypical executive always used a fountain pen. Next is Freeze Assets, a move that can be used by cold callers, tightwads, and penny pinchers. For this move, the cog waves his finger and a cloud appears that starts snowing on the tune. Freezing someone's assets is a term for making it so someone's bank account is completely useless. They can't withdraw or deposit any money until it is unfrozen. Next is Glower Power, a move that can be used by the Big Cheese, Headhunters, and Tightwads. For this move, the cog stares at the tune intently and then daggers come flying out of its eyes and attack the tune. This one is a bit more confusing what the meaning is, but I think it is based on the phrase where you glare daggers at someone. Next is Guilt Trip, which can be used by the backstabbers. For this move, the cog wiggles its finger and red sparks come flying at the tune, making them trip, damaging them. A guilt trip is when someone makes you feel guilty for something that you shouldn't really feel guilty for. Part of the joke is that the tune actually trips when the cog uses this move, playing off the word trip since it can have two meanings. Next is Half Windsor, a move used by mover and shakers and headhunters. For this move, the cog pulls out a tie and throws it at the tune. A half Windsor is a term for half tying a tie. This is also funny since this is in the middle of the three tie attacks being more powerful than clip on tie, but less powerful than power tie. Next is Hang Up, a move that can be used by two faces and ambulance chasers. For this move, the cog takes out a red phone, pushes a few buttons, and then hangs up on the receiver. Hang up means to end a telephone call, making this move somewhat self-explanatory. Next is Head Shrink, the signature move of the Headhunters. For this attack, the cog sprinkles some sparks onto the tune, which causes its head to go crazy and change sizes. A Head Shrinker is someone who cuts off the head of their enemies to keep as a trophy. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is what the Toontown team was going for, and they might have just meant it to be a reference to the fact that the headhunter has a very tiny head. Next is Hot Air, the signature move for cold callers. For this attack, the cog releases a string of flames at the tune. Hot Air is a term that means to lie, which is why this move works well for cold callers, since it is their job to lie to people. Next is Jargon, a move that can be used by double talkers and legal eagles. For this attack, the cog bangs his fist on his hand and red words come flying out to attack the tune. Jargon means a set of words that can only be understood by a small group of people. It is also common when talking about legal issues. Next is Legalese, the signature move of Legal Eagles. For his attack, the cog bangs his fist on his other hand, and a legal term like Hades Corpus will hit the tune. Legalese are formal terms used in legal documents that are hard to understand. It makes sense for the Legal Eagle to have this attack because a Legal Eagle would know the law inside and out. Next is Liquidate, a move that can be used by bloodsuckers and money bags. For this move, a rain cloud appears and rains on the tune. Liquidate is a term for when a company sells everything it owns to try to recuperate some of its losses. Next is Market Crash, the signature move of the money bags. For this move, the cog takes out a newspaper with the headline Market Crash and throws it at the tune. A market crash is when the stock market plummets in value and people lose a lot of money. For an investor, especially someone like a money bag, a market crash is the scariest term in the English language. But the cogs don't speak English. 
Next is Mumbo Jumbo, the signature move of Double Talkers. Cog pounds his fist, raises his hand, and the words come out of his hand to attack the tune. Mumbo Jumbo is a term for language that is intended to confuse someone. Next is Paradigm Ship, a move that can be used by minglers and spin doctors. The cog wiggles its fingers and yellow sparks appear that attack the tune. A paradigm shift is when something happens that cannot be explained by current scientific knowledge. In business, this can mean a new trend of how people spend their money that no one predicted and has never happened before. Next is Pecking Order, the signature move of the Legal Eagles. For this move, the cog takes a series of birds and throws them at the tune. A pecking order is a social hierarchy in an organization. This move is given to the Legal Eagles because they are birds as well. Next is Pickpocket, a move that can be used by telemarketers, name droppers, bottom feeders, and short changes. For this move, the cog extends his right arm trying to reach the tune's pocket and they take out $5 from the tune's pocket. A pickpocket is a thief that steals money from someone's pocket. Something interesting that is strange about this move is that the cog steals money from the tune, even though tunes use jelly beans as currency and not cash. Next is Pink Slip, the signature move of the downsizers. The cog takes out a pink slip with the word fired on it and throws it at one of the tunes. A pink slip is given to someone when they are fired from their job. Downsizers are people who fire employees that are not needed, so this is why this is their signature attack. Next is Play Hardball, a move that can be used by Loan Shark and Corporate Raiders. For this attack, the cog pulls out a baseball and throws it at the tune. To play hardball is a term for acting aggressively. In business, this could mean actively pursuing a deal. Next is Pound Key, a move that can be used by the cold callers and flunkies. For this attack, the cog pulls out a phone and starts pushing random numbers. Then a pound sign comes flying to attack the tune. Pound Key is the number sign on the phone. This move is only given to cogs at the bottom of the corporate ladder since they would usually be the ones calling people for their superiors. Next is Power Tie, a move that can be used by corporate raiders and money bags. For this move, the cog pulls out a big tie and throws it out the tune. Power Tie is a term used for a tie that portrays superiority and dignity. Next is Power Trip, an attack that can be used by robber barons, big wigs, Mr. Hollywoods, and minglers. For this move, the cog wiggles its fingers and blue sparks appear. Sparks come flying at the tune and make them trip. Power Trip is when a boss does something to his underlings to assert his dominance and make himself feel good. This is why only high level cogs can use this move, but ironically, this attack cannot be used by any boss bots. Next is Quake, a move that can be used by the mover and shakers and spin doctors. For this move, the cog jumps in the air three times and makes all the tunes fall down, damaging them. Now, Quake is a play on an earthquake, and as far as I can tell, has nothing to do with business. Next is Razzle Dazzle, a move that can be used by Name Droppers, Two Faces, Mr. Hollywoods, and Yes Men. For this move, the cog takes out a flat sign that looks like a mouse smiling. A ring of white sparkles comes out of the mouth and attacks a tune. Razzle Dazzle is doing something to impress someone. Businesses can be used in many ways to close deals and attract people to work for a certain company. Next is Red Tape, a move that can be used by Two Faces, Bloodsuckers, and Ambulance Chasers. For this move, the cog pulls out a roll of red tape and throws it at the tune. Red tape is a term used for a difficult and unnecessary legal process. Next is Restraining Order, the signature move of the Backstabbers. For this move, the cog takes out a piece of paper and bounces it at the tune. A restraining order is a legal document saying that someone must stay a certain distance away from someone. Next is Roldex, a move that can be used by headhunters, telemarketers, name droppers, and ambulance chasers. For this move, the cog pulls out a case with cards in it, and the cards come out and fly the tune. A Roldex is a small file containing information such as people's names or phone numbers. Next is Rub Out, the signature move of the pencil pushers. For this move, the cog pulls out a pencil and a writing pad. The cog erases something on the pad, and as he does, the tune starts to disappear. Rub out means to get rid of something, which is why the cog is using an eraser for the attack. This is also why this is the signature attack of the pencil pushers. Next is Rubber Stamp, a move that can be used by yesmen, glad handlers, bottom feeders, and double talkers. For this move, the cog pulls out a stamp and an ink pad. The cog dis the stamp and the pad, and the word cancelled comes flying and attacks the tune. Sometimes in the real world, when someone needs to sign a lot of documents, they create a stamp of their signature to sign the documents. Next is Sack, the signature move of the Downsizers. For this attack, the cog pulls out a brown sack and throws it at the tune. The sack hits the tune, causing them to collapse and take damage. Sack is a term for when someone is fired from a company. This move is given to Downsizers because they are the one who fire employees that the company does not need. Next is Shmooze, a move that can only be used by gland handlers and minglers. For this attack, the cog hits his hand two times and the word Shmooze and some random gibberish come flying and attack the tune. Shmooze means to have a long and intimate conversation. Many times salesmen will try to schmooze you into buying a product, which is why this move was given to the cellbots. Next is Shake, an attack that can be used by the mover and shakers and ambulance chasers. 
The cog starts to stomp on the ground, and as the cog stomps, he starts an earthquake, which damages the tune. Shake isn't exactly a business term, but is more or less the cog shaking and damaging you. Next is Shred, a move that can be used by flunkies and bottom feeders. The cog pulls out a shredder and a piece of paper. They put the paper in the shredder, and the shredded piece of paper attacks the tune. A paper shredder is something that, well, shreds paper. In business, low-level employees often shred documents that aren't needed anymore, which is why this move was given to two low-level cogs. Next is Spin, the signature move of the Spin Doctors. Cog spawns red particles and makes them spin. Then the particles fly the tune and damage them. Corporate spin-off is when a division of a company becomes an independent company. This move was given to Spin Doctors since they have Spin in their name. Next is Synergy, a move that can be used by Yesmin and Name Droppers. The cog quickly leans back and summons many dollar signs that attack the tune. A synergy is a combined effort to accomplish something faster than someone doing it alone. Since you will need a team of people, you will also need to fund them, which is most likely why this move involves money. Next is Tabulate, a move that can be used by number crunchers and bean counters. The cog pulls out a receipt printer and pushes several buttons, then different signs come out and attack the tune. Next is Tea Off, a move that can be used by Yes Men, Big Cheeses, Rubber Barons, and Minglers. The cog pulls out a golf club and a golf ball appears on the floor. The cog swings the club and the ball goes flying at the tune. This is a play on the fact that businessmen love to play golf. Next is Tremor, the signature move of the mover and shakers. For this attack, the cog stomps his feet and an earthquake damages the tune. The move is identical to shake, but this time it is actually the signature move of the mover and shakers. Next is water cooler, a move that can be used by short changes and bottom feeders. The cog pulls out a water cooler, pushes the blue button, and water shoots out damaging the tune. A water cooler is the place where people hang out and socialize in the office. Next is withdrawal, the signature move of the bloodsucker. The cog moves its fingers and white particles surround the tune that damages them. Withdrawal is when you take someone's money out of a bank account. This move was given to the bloodsuckers because they are vampires that suck blood, or in the case of the cog, sucks money out of people's accounts. Finally, the last cog move is write off which can be used by bean counters, loan sharks, pencil pushers, and spin doctors. The cog pulls out a pencil and a notepad. The cog then draws something on the pad, which causes a red check mark to come out and attack the tune. A write-off is when you lower the value of your earnings due to a business expense. This way, you don't have to pay taxes on the money lost. So that was all of the cog moves explained. I hope you guys found this pretty interesting. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Also, please tell me in the comments below what future Toontown videos you want to see me make, and be sure to subscribe for some more Toontastic videos coming soon. So that's it for now, and I will see you guys next time.